update software now. Close, close. <clears throat> I think we got to verse 8. Is that correct? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 8. <clears throat> well, of course, we know that the first part of it, we talked a little bit about last week about it's the uh, opening of the book, uh, greetings and so forth. But verse 8 is continuing on. It says, And wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath pur purposed in himself. Now, a couple, couple things I want you to see in, see in this uh, uh, verse. Of course, remember back in verse 7, uh, he was the, uh, Paul was saying that all grace and riches abound toward you, and then and then in here he's coming in and saying that all wisdom uh, would be uh, would would be toward us as well in verse eight, uh, and <clears throat> but then verse nine make, kind of begins to tell you how or or uh, how this is taking place. It says he having made known unto us the mystery of his will. In other words, Paul here is saying that we we should we have the mystery of his will. Now, mystery is something that you find quite often in the Bible. Uh, um, in fact, uh, well, I think uh, one of the one of the things that uh, the Jews say, or at least the religious Jews say, that it was God's it's God's good pleasure to hide a mystery in His Word, and it's our Good pleasure to find those mysteries. It's fine, like kind of like finding gems. It's kind of like finding uh, something that's very valuable that you didn't know was there, and you uncover it. And those are the mysteries that are in the Bible. And that's what it, one of these mysteries is. He's talking about here, having made known unto us the mystery of His will. You see, the, uh, another place it talks about the scriptures talks about that many of the Old Testament prophets. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 I think Jesus himself said it would have, would uh, have would like to have known what was taking place at this time and how Jesus was going to fulfill their will, fulfill His will in uh, in redeeming man, uh, redeeming man. And uh, but the, the 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 point is on verse nine here is that He has made that mystery uh, known. We have we have a lot more than the people in the Old Testament had. We have that we have the mystery has been revealed that Jesus has redeemed us. That uh, the reason for the sacrifice lamb that they that they sacrificed hundreds of years was just a, was just a a picture, if you will, of, of what Jesus was going going to do. That he was going to redeem them, and um, and and they didn't understand completely. It's kind of like uh, I think I've said this before, but it's kind of like you look at a, you look at a, a, a far off. I don't remember if you get up high, if you go up here on this front porch of the old sanctuary, you can see mountain, the mountain ranges way out there, but you can't tell which mountains closer. They all kind of blend together. Uh, it's, it's kind of dif difficult to. Maybe one might be a little darker than, and one might be a little lighter. It might make you think it's the darker one's closer, better, it's been more clear. But, but they blend together. You can't really tell. But as you get closer to the mountains, you begin the, those mountains. You would begin; they would become more clear to you. The same thing. That's kind of an example of what he's talking about. That the the people in the Old Testament, like the uh, Moses and all the prophets and so forth, they could see it, but they see it afar off. Uh, it was just a mystery to them of how how the Lord was going to redeem man because they. I think they understood that the the blood of bulls and goats was not not going to do the trick, and they so they wondered. Uh, of course, we, not only did they wonder, but they prophesied concerning that, uh, like in uh, like in uh, 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 Psalms 22 or Elijah 53, uh, how the Lord is, is was being revealed to them, and that's kind of like seeing the mountains that are far off, but as you get closer. It become his 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 knowledge becomes real to us, and that's what is, I think that's what one of the references is talking about. Having made known unto us the mystery of His will, He's made it known to us, 
uh, he made it known unto the disciples. They understood after he was resurrected and, and reappeared to them and showed them uh, showed them his hands and, and his side. Uh, and uh, and they knew that this he was the Messiah, like especially uh, Thomas. You know, remember, he, he was the doubter. And, but anyhow, and verse 9 says, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Now, it was his good pleasure. It was for him that he did it. Uh, he, it was for the, it, the, the pleasure of God to redeem us, to, 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 uh, to uh, pay the price. Uh, though it was, though, remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed to ask the Father if it was possible to let that cup pass from him, but that was impossible. And so, uh, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And it says he purposed, uh, uh, purposed in himself. In other words, he didn't ask anybody else to do it. He purposed it. He done it himself. He became the sacrifice. He didn't, uh, you remember when uh, Abraham was took Isaac to the top of the mountain? Uh, God had told him to sacrifice Isaac. But he, but when he got there and when he was about to, to sacrifice Isaac, the Lord stopped him and, and gave him a ram instead. Uh, that's a picture of what God has done for us. Uh, we deserve the, the punishment, but God has provided a lamb for us instead. And that, of course, that lamb is Jesus. And so I think that's what it means when he purposed this purpose. Uh, of course, his good pleasure, it was what he wanted to do. It was his desire to redeem us. Uh, it wasn't our desire to be redeemed as much as it was his desire to redeem us, and his, that was his good pleasure, uh, which he hath purposed in himself. And I just went over that. Uh, verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in, in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. <clears throat> that in the dispensation of time, uh, that's kind of a big, long word, but what it basically means that in the fullness of time, uh, or when, when, when he gets to the, uh, the ultimate sh uh, re revelation of who he is, well, that begin. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't say that it began, but that full revelation come when he, when he, through John, when he wrote the book of Revelation. That's the last book. Uh, but all. But I'm not saying just Revelation. I'm saying all the Bible. Uh, the, all the Bible has been is a is a revelation. It's it's a revealing of who the Messiah would be, what he would do, and when he would come. Over and over, you can find out uh, what he would be like in the Old Testament. You can find out where he would be born. You can find out uh, 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 who what would happen to him. Uh, you can find out what he would be doing while he was there. All that's in the Old Testament. That's what that's what it's saying that in the dispensation of time, the fullness might be gathered together. All that, all that would be, become evident. And so uh, in, in, in Jesus' first coming, but even more so, all the prophecies and things in the fullness of time were much closer to. And that's not just the first coming of Jesus, but it's the second coming when he will be totally revealed to all of us and to all mankind. Uh, the scripture says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And of course, that I believe, just like many others, that that, that don't just mean those that have been saved. That means everybody. Everybody's gonna bow their knee. Even Hitler is gonna bow his knees to Jesus someday uh, uh, in, in the judgment. But, uh, but anyhow, that's the, in the fullness of time. It's like, it's, like a, it's like a fruit that's been hanging on a tree that starts as a small bud and then it gets larger and it's green and finally it begins to turn colors and that's the fullness of time when it begins to ripen so that it can be harvested and that's the fullness of time for that fruit well this is the fullness of time that we're seeing today uh, the, it, it's beginning to ripen and, and as, as like the day, uh, Daniel said that, uh, that at the last days these things will be revealed uh, they, the knowledge will be increased. And I don't think that's just knowledge of computers and stuff, though I think that's part of it. But it's the knowledge of his word. 
that, that, that becomes more open to all, all, all of Christian, Christendom, and, uh, that, that we will understand more about what it's saying. He's, he's, del he's revealing it to us more so today than it has ever been revealed before. The understanding, like, let me give you an example. Like, for instance, a um, hundred years ago, if you read the scriptures about how God was going to bring the Jews back to Israel, a lot of people, most people in fact, were very skeptical of it. They didn't believe it. How could it, how could it be? They've been, they've been, they've not been a nation in nearly 2,000 years. And how can it be that they will come, become a nation again? You see, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That, uh, the, as, it, as that knowledge begins, but in 1948, it happened. It began, to, they became a nation again. And they have continued to be a nation. That's the ripening. You're seeing the fruit ripen. Uh, and uh, like, for instance, uh, uh, all that's taken place over these uh, years since then, how the Lord has protected them. Uh, but not just not just Israel, but in, I think it's it's revealing to all all the Christ, all the Christians uh, that if they if they won't, won't get into the Word and study, uh, things will be revealed more so today than ever has been before, uh, because it's getting so close to being revealed. That we're getting, in other words, we're not looking at the mountains far off as much no more, but that we're we're getting close to those mountains. They're beginning to be be. Uh, evident to us about what's taking place and we can understand then what's going on uh, uh, more so than ever before I think that's what Daniel meant when he talked about uh, talked about uh, told Dan uh, the Lord told Daniel an angel told Daniel to to go to go to your fathers but but I will resurrect I will bring you back you know when the, uh, when when the, when the time is right and I think that's we're getting close to that uh, any comments so far? says both which are in heaven and which are on earth and even in him so in other words that information that fullness of time is is taking place everywhere in heaven now when you say in heaven i think it means not only those that are saved and in heaven with him have gone to be with the lord but also i think it means the enemies uh the princes of prince of the power of the air they know that their time is short in fact scripture tells us that uh that that's why he uh, that's one of the when when it gets close uh, Satan knows he has but hasn't but a little time I think the way the scripture says it and so he gets busy uh, trying to uh, fool mankind into into uh, ex not believing in God but believing fool mankind but fooling him then into not believing his word and I, we see a lot of that also today uh, verse ten in the space of the time but in, excuse me both which are in heaven and which are on earth and even in him. In other words, even in him, it, it, it is revealed. And I don't know exactly what that means, but uh, one of the things I think, possibly what I think is, you know, Jesus said that uh, he was going to go to build a place for us. He will come again and receive you into a, myself is what he said. But nobody, but Jesus, even Jesus said, nobody don't know. The, the the hour of his appearing, not not the, not the angels, not even the angels of heaven, and not even the Son, only the Father knows, and so I think that's talking about the last time it will be revealed to him when he is to go get his children from the Father. <clears throat> verse eleven. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. There's a lot in that verse. Uh, it says, in whom also we have obtained inheritance. Uh, that, that's the inheritance. Now, uh, we, we all know what an inheritance is, but when you, what you inherit from the Lord is much more valuable than any inheritance that you would receive on the earth. The inheritance that he, that he gives us, we have obtained it uh, by by being adopted into the commonwealth of Israel. We are part of his people. Once we're saved, we become a family member of, of the Lord, just like the, any Jews would be. Of course, the Jews still have to accept Jesus as their Savior, just like everybody else. Uh, if they don't, they will be lost, just like anybody else who don't accept him. Uh, there's no difference there. Uh, 
but we'll see more about that later on. But we have a, we also who have obtained an inheritance. You notice this, it's, it's not, it's not a future tense. It's a, it's a, it's a, we have obtained. In other words, it's already ours. It's already been purposed for us. We have already received that inheritance. Uh, it's just a matter of using it. It's just a matter of recognizing it's there and uh, applying it and, and taking advantage, you might say, of it uh, in our lives and walking in him, uh, that inheritance. Uh, Paul, uh, Jesus gave uh, some examples in some of his teachings. One of the ones was he gave, uh, he gave to, I think it was three different guys, a, pro a, pro a proverb, but he gave three different guys, one 100 talents, one 50 talents, and one 10 talents. And remember uh, the, the one that had the 100 talents, he went and invested it somehow or another and he, he doubled it. And so the same thing was true for the one that had 50 talents. But the one that had 10, he just went and buried it because he, he didn't want to lose it. He held on to it too tight. And, uh, and uh, because of that, uh, the, even that which he had was taken away from him. And so I think what this is, this is talking about, uh, that, that we have been predestined according to will, we have obtained that inheritance. And what that inheritance uh, is, is what, uh, what he has given us, invested in us, you might say, for us to do, uh, for us to accomplish in, our, in this walk on this earth. Uh, that's the inheritance. Of course, we will receive our reward when we go be, to be with him. That brings up uh, a lot of people think that talk about after, after that the, we will be judged and we will be judged after, after uh, at the end. Uh, they were just called the, uh, not the great white throne judgment, that's the different one. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. And we will all uh, give an account of the things that we have done in the spirit. And that's, that's the things that uh, he's predestined according to his purpose for all things that after the counsel of his own will. In other words, all things that we have done after his will or in his will will be, will be that reward. Um, scripture puts it like this, that, 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 uh, that, that judgment will be like uh, putting, uh, putting fire to it. In other words, it will burn away the s straw uh, and, uh, and the wood and the stubble but we will leave the, it will leave the gold and the silver and the precious stones will be there and be revealed in that judgment. And that's what, that's what it's talking about now. And I can't explain to how the fire is. I, I just, that's why I'm just, can't leave number 10. Because it's not going to be burned away. It's all Yeah. will be revealed. Yeah. And, and that comes down to what you just mentioned about the judgment, too. Yeah. Because it's written in the world. And it will be revealed. That's right. That's exactly what Jesus said. One thing that Jesus said is not one jot or tittle will be removed until all has been accomplished or revealed. And a jot or a tittle is like a, a exclamation point or a quotation mark. It's not even a letter. That's what a jot is. It's, a, it's just a dot or a couple dots or something beside a Hebrew letter that helps you under, understand how to speak it, how to, how to pronounce it. And, and that, Jesus said not, not even one of those will be re removed until all is fulfilled. Uh, and that's what you're talking about. That, that uh, we, in another place, I think it's in uh, Romans chapter 13, I believe he says. He says that we, we now look through a, a glass dimly but when we, when we see him face to face, we will be like him because we will see him as he is. And that glass dimly, it's like, you know, back when, uh, back when Jesus and them was, they, had all, they didn't have glass mirrors then. They had uh, bronze mirrors that they would polish and flatten out the best they could, and that would be their mirrors. Uh, and, you know, metal tends to move and, and get, get beat around a little bit. And so it, it, it was not a real good picture of us when we look at it. But what Jesus says is that's what, that's what we see now. It's dimly. It's not as, not as clear as it should be. But when we see him face to face, it says we will be like him because we will see him as he is. We, just, we will see the full Jesus completely.
and, and completely fulfilled. And the words will be, his word will be accomplished in and through it. The computer was from off again. <clears throat> but that was in verse 10, you said. Yeah. Uh, where did we get to? 11. In whom we have obtained inheritance. We, we talked about that. Uh, we have, have an inheritance that can't be removed. <laughs> Another place Jesus said to store up riches in heaven where moth or rust don't, don't corrupt. Uh, don't worry about storing up riches on the earth so much, but store up riches in heaven. Um, and uh, it's kind of like also, kind of like the man that's, the, the two men that uh, one built his house on the sand, the other built his house on the rock. And, and they both built the same kind of house. They both done everything the same, but one of them, was not built on a, a firm foundation. Uh, anyhow, verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted who first trusted in Christ. <clears throat> That's, that is the main purpose of us when we are saved, is to bring glory to him. And how did we bring glory to him? bring glory to him by being obedient. I don't mean we bring glory to him by following strict rules and regulations, but it means we be, bring glory to him because we're obedient, kind of like an obedient child or a disobedient child. Uh, you have the same, the same thing here, uh, that, uh, that, that uh, uh, that's, how, that's how we bring praise and glory to him who first trusted in Christ, you see. It says, we should be to him praise of his glory. All that he has done, he's done for us. There's nothing else that he, really, there's nothing else that Jesus can do, or the Lord can do. He's done it all. That's what he meant when he was hanging on the cross and said, it is finished. He was saying the task is over, it's been done. And that, uh, that, and that we uh, 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 trust in him for our strength and and guidance. But anyhow, verse 13, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after uh, that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. There's a lot in that verse too, but it says, in whom ye, ye also trusted. Uh, trusted is in italics. But it says, in whom ye also after that, ye had heard the word of truth, you might say. When we hear the word of truth, remember there's another place that says, uh, talks about, I can't pronounce, uh, quote it all, but it talks about here, comes, the, the salvation comes by hearing, the hearing of the word of God. It's through, through what we hear that we hear the message. And when we hear the message, then the Holy Spirit deals with our heart. But it's not until we hear the message uh, that, that that takes place. All of us, I'm, I'm hoping that all of us have heard that message, heard the voice of God in our hearts and have accepted him. But it's in whom we also trust it. Uh, in other words, not only do we hear it, but we trust it. We, we put our faith in it. And what I mean by put our faith in it is we, we uh, depend on it, I guess is a better way of putting it. Said this before: We, uh, when you walk into a dark room, you got faith that when you flip the switch there, it's going the light's going to come on. If you don't have faith and you don't trust it, you're going to sit in the dark. It's that plain and simple. Uh, if you if you uh, decide you want to go to Stageville and you go down here to the Bills Marina or used to be Bills Marina, what it is now, and and you step there and you see that bridge and you you start wondering if that bridge will hold me up. You're going to sit there. You're not going to cross that bridge until you believe that that bridge will hold you up when you go across it. And that's that's trusting. That's a good example uh, of what it what it means to be obedient. We will be obedient because we trust that the Lord has prepared and is with us and is going to, is redeeming us. That's the trust that He's talking about. Uh, we do that the same way uh, in in our actions. Uh, that's why that's why uh, James said. Faith without works is dead. That's what James meant when he said that. Or actually, it's Jacob. 
but everybody, all the Bibles will say James, but it's interpreted James, but it's really the book of Jacob. And, and, uh, and, and uh, he, he says that faith is that if you don't have, you can show, he says, show me, show me uh, your faith without works and I'll show you my faith with works. Because the faith has to, faith can't be faith if there's not an not a action involved in it. Let's put it like that. If there's no action involved, there's no faith. A faith, faith produces action. Uh, if they don't, if you don't have faith, there won't be an action. Right? Uh, the gospel who has heard the word of truth, and notice he calls it the word of truth because he, what he's saying here, it's not a lie. It's not the lie that it's not like a lie that you heard when Satan uh, tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden when he said, "Hath God said?" That's a lie, and uh, uh, Satan is the liar and the father of lies, and that's what that's what that's what that means. But he says, "Ye have heard the word of truth, which is opposite of the lie. It's truth. It's something you can depend upon. It, it was you've heard that word. That truth. That word is true and faithful. Uh, and it says, truth, the gospel of your salvation. Of course, the good news gospel. That's what the gospel is. Good news." of your salvation uh, of course you could interpret salvation there if it was in hebrew it would would be yeshua you could interpret that that word right there the gospel of your of G, of jesus is what you could the way you could interpret that in whom also having that ye believed ye were sealed with the holy spirit of promise and once we once we accept him once we invite him into our hearts and once we, as we learn to trust him, the more we learn to trust him, uh, the more uh, he will, we, we believe in him, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. This is, this is one of the verses that, that uh, uh, I, I want to, I think confirms the fact that once saved, always saved. You hear this, there's some churches that believe you can be saved and lost and lost and saved. And <coughs> <coughs> Once we receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of promise, uh, the Lord don't take it away. It's there forever. Uh, it's just like it, we can no more be lost, saved, and then lost, in my opinion, than your, your child can no longer be your child. How impossible is that? It's impossible. It's impossible for our children to no longer be our children. You can take the DNA test if you want to to prove it, but no matter what they do, they're still going to be our children, whether they're obedient or disobedient. They're going to be our children, and and um, we are sealed with that. And what I believe it means that we're sealed not only uh, not only to be saved, but we're sealed to be His children, just adopted into the Commonwealth of Israel. We have all the we have all the rights of a child. We have all the rights of a, a son or a daughter in the kingdom of God. Uh, we have uh, other places in the scripture says that we have been we have become uh, priests and and uh, uh, that serve in His kingdom. Uh, that and of course, priest is one that intercedes, intercedes for someone else. A kingdom of priests, I think. And then another place that talks about we being become uh, building blocks in His kingdom, but. Uh, and Paul goes into great detail explaining that one might be a finger, one might be a, uh, an ear, one might be an eye, but, but we all have, we have, different, we have different gifts, you might say, but we all have the same purpose. Uh, we are all purposed and works together. It's no more than the ear can't say to the eye, I can see just as good as you can. It, 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 it can't do that. The ear can't see. And the eye can't hear. Uh, it has to be for the for this purpose. And it says he's been sealed. Uh, indication of sealed. Uh, one of the thing. One of the things about uh, the, the uh, burial of Jesus is is not only did they roll a stone in front of the, the, the sepulcher, but they sealed it with a Roman seal. Uh, and to break a Roman seal would have been mean would mean death. And yet, and yet that seal was broken. 
and uh, to my knowledge, none of the none of the guards that were there were put to death. Uh, but anyhow, that seal means it, the, if the Roman seal was that that strong, can you imagine what the seal of the Lord is? And we're sealed by Him. Uh, that seal does not does, doesn't go away. Uh, it's it's not something that can come and go again, like like I said earlier. Uh, but we're we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. In other words, that Holy Spirit constantly is telling us that we are we are promised. We are uh, a part of Him. We have still have the old nature, but we, but, but we're to put to death the old nature and put feed the the new nature. And uh, that's what it means when it says uh, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Any comment so far? Verse 14 says, which is the earnest, earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his Lord. The earn, earnest, in other words, that's the, the earnest, you know, it's kind of like, kind of like if you're gonna buy a house or something, you put down earnest money. Now what that means is you, Maybe, maybe if you're going to buy some land or something, you're not going to got the whole. You hadn't gone to the bank, got the, all the money or whatever, but you put down some money. It says I'm going to buy this to the to the seller. It says I'm going to buy this, uh, but uh, I'm going to. I have to go get the, get go get the rest of the money. But don't sell it to anybody else because I want you to hold it. And that's the reason I'm giving you this earnest money that that uh, that you hold it. Until until I come back, the same thing is true here, which is the earnest of our inheritance. In other words, the Holy Spirit of promise that we talked about in the previous verse is the earn is the earnest money you might say of our of our redemption. Redemption means a purchase, and that earnest has been put down uh, into uh, for our inheritance. And notice how long it is until the redemption of the purpose possession in other words until uh, until we uh, are completely in him like it talks about in uh, in uh, romans when he says we, look, we like i said earlier we, we look, look through a, a a glass dimly but when we see him we will be like him that's when that's when we see uh, the redemption of a pur purposed possession that's the purpose possession is jesus Right now, we've had the, the seal of the promise. It's been the earnest money, you might say, that's been put down for our pur purchase, that nobody else can come and claim us. We've already been, uh, the earnest money has been put down, and we're just waiting for the return of the Lord so that we can be with him, and we not only will we receive, not only do we, we don't just receive the earnest money, uh, the initial payment, but we, we, the payment is paid in full. You might say when we go to be with him, when we see him face to face, and we will be like him. The redemption is, the, I guess, our receipt. Though. Yeah, yeah. The redemption. We've already been redeemed, but we've not. But uh, but we've, he's just paid to put the furnace money down. But when he comes and when he receives us into himself, then that's when the complete payment is. Is put down on us. We've been redeemed. That's what it's talking about. Possession unto, now again, it's always about it, the purpose possession unto the praise of his glory. He, again, it's all done for his glory. It's not for our glory. We don't deserve any of the glory. We don't, we didn't do it. He did it. And it's him that's purchasing us. Uh, we have no, we have no any, we have nothing to put into it. Now, some people will try. Some people will try to say, God, I know you've, re you've saved me, but I think I need to do this, uh, that, this, that, and the other to uh, make sure that you're, make sure that I, I, I'm okay and I'll, I'll go to heaven. That, you're trying to add to what Jesus has already done. You can't do that. It don't work. Uh, you can't add anything to it. You can't take anything away from it. It's complete. It's finished. Uh, uh, there's nothing that we can do that will make God love us any more than He already did. Who He, because the Scripture says, He has loved us before. Yet when we were yet sinners, 
Christ died for us. Uh, we didn't do anything to earn it. He earned it. He did it. He did it all, and it was for His glory. Uh, verse fifteen says, "Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and loved unto all the saints." So what he's saying is he's heard about what's going on here at Ephesus and how. He, uh, all, let's look at it again. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all his saints. What is, this is Ephesians. What did Jesus say in Rome, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, Revelation about the church of Ephesus? Taught mentioned it last week. They left their first love. This, look, look at this verse here. It says, the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. They were showing the love that they had to all the saints at this time when this when this book was read. But later on, they left their first love. I think that's the same love that we're talking about right here that they left uh, in 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 uh, Revelation. Uh, I think chapter one or two, uh, probably chapter two, I think. But anyhow, uh, here it says that wherefore also after I after I heard, in other words, Paul had heard about their faith and trust in the Lord and, uh, and how they loved and helped the other saints uh, with, with whatever, in, in many, many ways, I'm sure. Uh, in verse 16, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. But Paul was saying that he, don't, he, don't, he always thanks the Lord for what, what, uh, what, what uh, they, that church at Ephesus had done. Uh, it didn't cease from giving thanks unto them that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and in knowledge of him we all want to pray that <laughs> that, that, that the Lord will give us the revelation and the knowledge of him and the wisdom uh, let's look at those three things uh, may give unto you the spirit. So we're talking about the spirit of three, these three different things. Uh, of course, first of all, it says that the God of our Father, uh, in other words, the God and Father of Jesus Christ is the one that will give this to us. First of all, wisdom. What is wisdom? Stop and think about it. Does wisdom mean you've been to a lot of schools and you've got a big, a lot of, a lot of diplomas on your wall? Some people might think that, uh, but no, that don't mean that don't mean that don't. Uh, that's not what wisdom is. It's far from it. Sometimes, sometimes the people that's got all those uh, uh, diplomas and so forth on their wall, I think they know everything, and they actually don't know nothing. Not always. Not always. That's, I'm so sure there's some. Very, I know that there's some good ones. It's the beginning of wisdom. That's right. Exactly right. The fear of the Lord. To realize that there is a God and that we're just mere humans that he is redeeming. And that is, that's where wisdom comes from. Uh, it's tr learning to trust him and not ourselves. The more we learn to trust him and not ourselves, uh, the more wisdom we receive. Uh, all right, that wisdom, wisdom is, is, uh, is knowledge, you might say, is knowing what to do. That he gives us knowledge, a, a, dis, a way to go to to to, to, uh, to 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 deal with our lives and the lives of those around us. And it says also not only wisdom but revelation. What is revelation? It's almost, it's almost pretty well self-explanatory in many ways. The book of Revelation. That's a revealing uh, apocalypse. Apocalypse. How do me say that? But it basically means the revelation of the Lord, uh, to know more of him, that he will be revealed to us on a daily basis more and more and more as we see him work. And we see him work in our lives and we see him work in, in, uh, in our paths, in our ways. Uh, that revelation uh, becomes more evident. Uh, I tend to want to say it becomes more evident when we get older, but I don't know if that's the case. There's probably some young folks that, Got more revelation than I got, <laughs> but but uh, that's what it's talking about here, and also uh, the revelation. Where's it? The revelation of 
the knowledge of him. That's what the revelation is. That we become more aware of who Jesus is and more aware of what he has done. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I think today is, is really a, a miraculous time to be, to be a, a Christian because he is revealing much more now than he has ever done before in the past of, of, his, of his, uh, his plans for, for this earth and this world. Uh, that's the revelation. Also the revelation that, could come that would, he would give to us in our lives and, uh, and what he wants us to do. Uh, but that's what it's talking about there in the revelation uh, of the knowledge of him, who he is. Uh, a lot of people, uh, there is, there's a, a, a lot of people, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know how to explain this, but they think it, when they think of Jesus, they think they think of a picture of a of a man that has a robe and toga on, and and uh, uh, walks around and looks different, has different different demeanors and all. You can pick him out. Scripture says it's just the opposite. He looked like an ordinary man, like everybody else. There was nothing nothing about him that looked any different from any other man. He looked the same, and I've, he did not wear a Roman toga. He wore a Hebrew tallit, and you've heard me talk about a tallit before. Uh, that's the prayer shawl. Uh, it's got the got the stripes on it and the seat seats, the fringes, and the little long tassels at the corners, the wings of the garment. And and that's what uh, that's what uh, uh, it means to know, have the knowledge of Him. The more a lot, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is, is a lot of people don't even don't even think twice about the fact that he was a Jew, that he was Jewish. Uh, there's some there's those that think, well, he was the son of God. He wasn't the son of a, a Jewish man. Well, that's true. He was he was the son of God, but he was a, also the son of a Jewish young girl. Uh, he was Jewish, and uh, in some ways, you could say God is Jewish. Because that's his family, that's his people, that's his chosen people. Uh, from the from way back when he chose Abraham, even farther back than that, actually. But but uh, have no idea that who Jesus really is, other than the fact maybe they're saved, maybe they've accepted him, but they haven't grown any in the knowledge of him to speak of, uh, knowing uh, knowing of what he's what his plans are for you and for me, and for this world. That's the knowledge of him, what he's gonna do. Uh, I, think it, I think it means a lot about studying the scripture, about prophecy, and what the plan, Lord plans to do in this earth. Uh, but anything, it has to do with Jesus. If, if the reason I say that is, what, look at the book of Revelation. It's called the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revelation of Yeshua, uh, the Messiah. And what does it tell, talk about? It talks about all the circumstances in the world and how this, that, and the other is going to happen in the final days. And he, and he, he is finally revealed toward the end uh, and, and, and defeats all the enemies. And verse, well, let's, let's stop there at verse 19. We'll pick it up at verse 19 next week. Anybody got any comments they'd like to add? I know we're going a little slower here, but... Debate. The debate, my opinion, <laughs> I think it's pretty well self-explanatory. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'd re be real honest with you. I hope he. I hope they. He, I hope he stays in there and runs. Because because they put somebody else in there, the more of a chance of them winning. <laughs> I wouldn't. I'd, if I was Trump, if I was Trump, I'd say I ain't going to go talk with that crazy guy anymore. <laughs> yeah, he, he every, he keeps talking about Trump's a liar, but everything he says. That's one thing. One thing I've noticed, and I, I'm 
get political. If any of y'all support her, Biden, I'm sorry. I apologize. But, but there's. Uh, there's one thing I've noticed that anything that you notice, if anything that they accuse Trump of doing, they've already done. They've already done it themselves. I, I, that's just amazing to me. And it's and also it's amazing to me how they can, it makes me worry why, why they can take and try him for who knows what. I still don't understand it. And yet these other ones get away with almost everything. Well, if I'd have been, what was that now? I said Biden got over his cold real quick. Yeah. Because when he did the rally in North Carolina the next day, he was doing fine. Yeah, yeah, he'd be fine. He had his teleprompter. That's why. That's <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's all stand and, uh, and have a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. <laughs> Who is this? Jimmy Setson. Jimmy Setson. Albert Lyon Setson. Oh, we did that. All right, well, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for men, again for this day and the many blessings that you've given us. And we ask now, Lord, that you'll be with us as we uh, as we leave. As we go into this worship service, that everything that is said and done will bring glory, honor, and praise to your name. And we'll just thank you, Father, for it. Uh, I pray a blessing over everyone here now. Yavarachacha Adonai Vaish Marecha. Yaer Adonai Panadilecha Vilkaneka. Yasa Adonai Panadilecha Vyasimlecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, his peace. As always, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Shem Yeshua. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good to have you all today.